Welcome to the shooting show. This week we follow the lucky Ely Hawk winner Pigeon Decoy in with Jeff Garrett. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. of going when I need I can go and when it's right to go yeah. which is the difference if when it's right to go mm -hmm. you know so there's a few more coming here you see see they're swinging up there so you've got some decoys out up there so they, they're making the move for there yeah and hopefully the idea when you get a few decoys now they'll be seeing the decoys look yeah. And even if they didn't, they, they were going like they were going within shooting range of us. Yeah. So, so that's, I think that's definitely the spot we've got to go to. Today we've got Mohammed Khan, who was the winner of the Ely Hawk Pigeon Competition last August time, who correctly guessed the amount of pigeons that I'd shot up until the game fair last year. And due to one or two things this year, um, it's the first chance we've had to get together and get him over here to try and see if we can get a day pigeon shooting. What we're doing, or where we're going, we've got a field of rape behind us. There's a clump of trees in the middle of the field and we've been standing here now 20 minutes, half an hour, uh, watching it. And it, to start with, it was a toss up between the clump of trees or the side of the new wood. Um, but, but everything that we've seen so far of going within the clump, within shooting range of that clump of trees. So uh, we're going to head off up there, build a hide, get the decoys out and see what the day produces. So uh, we got set up outside, well, set up in the uh, clump of trees. There was a nice bit of chewed off rape the north side of the clump of trees and stand and rape all around the rest of it. Uh, so we had to be uh, a bit careful where we were shooting birds, obviously, because um, as it happens, you know, we've, we've shot a few birds a day that we couldn't pick up, which really does go against the grain for me. Um, but unfortunately, we couldn't, we couldn't help it. Luckily, um, the last day's pigeon shooting I had, which would have been a month ago, uh, the decoys that I'd got, um, as I do every day, um, I'd actually decided to put in the old freezer down the farm. So I've got a dozen proper decoys that have been frozen down, uh, which I've got out and thawed out. So we're starting off with 12 proper pigeons today, which should give us a head start, because as you know, with me personally, I do like the real McCoys, so we'll give them a whirl to start with and uh, see what uh, what the day brings. I saw the competition on the shooting show's uh, Facebook page. And I clicked on the link. Uh, it's a bit of a funny uh, story about that. I filled in all the form and pressed send, and I got a message that it's not been possible. Try again later. So I thought. It's not going to happen. When I got my email, at first I thought, is it a scam or is it a real one? <laughs> <laughs> so when I called David, um, yeah, it was real and I was yeah. over the moon, Yeah, actually. Uh, 
Basically, I um, uh, was born in Pakistan, uh, moved over here about 11 years ago. Uh, been living in Manchester, now in Yorkshire. I've been into shooting since childhood, started with my dad at the age of five. Uh, but then there was a break of 10 years where I didn't shoot, so I'm getting back into it. Uh, over there, there's a lot of public land. You don't need permission, you can just go and shoot. But over here, you, you need to need permission of the, of the landowner or the farmer. And that, I think, um, as compared to over there, is the biggest uh, obstacle many people yeah. face. Uh, but then again, uh, if it wasn't like that, then I don't think that there would be as much wildlife, <laughs> which is what we see around here. All right, so next lot that comes in, or comes like that, you shoot. And then the next lot after that, I'll shoot then. I'm uh, basically a wildfowler. Um, early mornings, mud and that sort of stuff, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> freezing cold. I'm a hammer, a hammer get ready, so I'm coming around the side of the, side of the um, clump of trees. Don't know where they are, but there they are, look, look what they're doing. There's one, look there. Look, 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 look. Yeah, there's another one there, look. Yeah. Shot, well done. And it... uh, I, I like uh, pigeon shooting as well, because it's more challenging. I think it's the most uh, challenging bird there is. Uh, people would disagree with me, but I think it is quite a difficult bird to shoot. Um, and it tests every uh, field craft you have. I remember in uh, a club uh, near Humber River, and we go on the near Humber. The biggest factor today was when we got set up and we it had was. only 10 minutes, quarter of an hour of shooting, the wind decided to get up and blow an absolute hooli. And we're sitting there facing the wind, so we've got a, north, a cold north wind blowing straight into the hide, uh, which I think through the day certainly affected uh, the day that, we'd, that I'd got planned. Oh, mate, you all right? Cool. I mean, what was happening, they were coming in, sliding in beside us, either side of the spinney, and just hitting the wind. When they got above the sort of like top of the hill, they're hitting the wind and just, just going off. And, and you'd get up, you'd have a shot, and you, you killed it or you missed it, whatever, and the second shot was just gone. Um, so it did hamper us quite a bit, actually. Ah. Don't, don't panic, mate, don't worry. <laughs> that needs a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them just come round here. <laughs> Didn't see until the last minute, they just literally went that side there. Good shot. Yeah, coming in front, look, Mohammed, see him? Yeah. To the left there, look. Might, uh, he might actually de decoy in, he might, he might actually. Look. What's he doing? What's he doing? Where's he gone? There. Shot. Well done. Shot. 
shot. Good shot. Thank you. Nice shot. Mohammed had probably had the shot of the day. Uh, a high driven bird coming towards us with the wind. Shot! Hey! That was a shot of the day. There he goes. Yeah. Just falling there, mate. Yeah. Shot of the day. Certainly wouldn't want to stand behind him on a pheasant Another bow one. as a back yeah. gun. Yeah. Seeing how he shot that one. And um, he also takes the pillowcase of the day <laughs> as well. Um, one there, I think it was a second barrel shot across the flashed in front of him and uh, caught a full Ely Pigeon Select pattern. The biggest uh, um, expectation was to meet Jeff here because uh, first time I uh, uh, known him from his uh, Gamekeepers DVDs. Yeah. Uh, I bought one for my brother, he's into shooting as well. and. Uh, uh, I thought this opportunity to meet someone with the expertise in pigeon shooting like him. So he's, I think, a celebrity. <laughs> uh, and I like his field craft, uh, the way he uses natural uh, pigeon as decoys and um, no electronics whatsoever. Uh, using the wind, using the location and everything. So I was uh, hoping to learn from him. And I think I've taken quite a few uh, tips on board. <laughs> well, hopefully. I mean, it's, it's, to be honest with you, today, with the wind direction, it, because we chose the clump of trees, which was right to do, um, I didn't expect the wind to get up as strong. So it's probably not the best conditions for wind direction. Yeah. But it's a case of, you know, we had to make do with what we had. Um, you know, but we got enough pigeons to come in to the decoys and around the decoys for us to have a have a good afternoon, um, you know, and, and perhaps different circumstances it, it might have been a bit better. But we, we was made the best of what we had yeah. opportunities that we had today. He shot well today. I was very impressed with his shooting today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, and I mean he killed some really good ones. Uh, especially the, the ones that were coming with the wind, um, you know, killed some really good ones above us, nice ones across the decoy. And like, like Mohammed said, you know, he killed a, an array of um, different birds today because that is just the pigeon. You know, it's not just one coming at you from left to right, it's left to right, right to left, going away, coming towards us, climbing over with a belt of tree, all the climbing. But you're taking that one there, and, yeah. And he has shot some really good some ones. Pillow. Today. Oh, you got that one, hands down there, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Just come down there. That one there, look, that one there.
<laughs> I like them sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well we finished up, we picked up 72, uh, 71, um, which is not too bad for the day, but uh, I think with a, a less strong wind than what we had, uh, I think we could have uh, we could have shot a few more. But, but all in all, you know, we've had a good day, had a few shots and we picked up 71 pigeons. One of the biggest things that was uh, was noticeable day. It was it was so important to have one of these with us in the high today because um, although we we picked up 71 and we we definitely lost one or two, and we would have lost quite a few more. Even pigeons that were just in front of us, you know, in a little bit of rape in front of us, we'd walked over it time and time again, and the dog was just going in there and picking one or two up right at the end there. So on a day like today when we got stand and rape, you know. He's been an asset for us, big one. Hundred pound on your stud fee. <laughs> hey. Watching the flight line and selecting the right place to build a hide, I think that's the most important thing I learned today. And then uh, how to build a hide, uh, the pattern of decoys, how to set him. Uh, yeah, the first time I used uh, Ely uh, Pigeon Select um, and I found them to be really uh, good uh, patterning and uh, I've got a very good uh, knockdown power. Uh, some of the birds were quite uh, far away. I think I managed a few. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> It was a fantastic day, I enjoyed it a lot. <coughs> you could probably tell by my smile. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, I was looking forward to it for, for a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Well, I'll, uh, I would uh, thank uh, Ely Hogg for giving me this opportunity uh, to meet uh, one of my um, uh, heroes, I suppose. <laughs> and. Um, giving me this opportunity to come and uh, be on the shooting show and uh, enjoy a day of pigeon shooting with Jeff, uh, which was fantastic. Thank you. Well Tom. done. Well done. Jeff and Mohammed there making shooting pigeons look easy. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. There's a £10,000 clay shoot coming to the UK Game Fair this summer. Boosted by sponsorship from Ely Hawk and Primatic, the UK Game Fair Classic offers a massive prize payout for all three days of the fair, with £500 going to the High Gun in the 50 Sporting event and £250 in the 25 Sport Trap every day. Class winners pocket £100 each, and category winners take home a bundle of Ely cartridges. You could win one day, then come back and win again the next. And there's an aggregate prize on offer too. The cost of an air gun licence has been revealed. It'll cost Scottish air gunners £72 for a five-year certificate. You might be issued a shorter certificate, however, to even out the flow of demand. If you've already got a firearms or shotgun certificate, you can apply for a coterminous air gun licence for just £5. Licensing will be available from the 1st of July, with legislation taking effect on the 1st of January 2017. Keep up with the latest news in Egg and Shooter magazine. Peter Glenser is the new chairman of Basque. Famed as a shooting lawyer, Glenser takes the helm after the resignation of Alan Jarrett, but he'll only be in the post for less than two weeks before the Basque Council meeting, when another election for chairman will be held. Two more Basque Council members will be elected at that meeting too, after Alan Balfour and Jonathan Garten resigned. The meeting takes place on the 18th of June. Mark Windsor won a dramatic silver medal at the FITASC European Championship in France last weekend. 
he was awarded the overall championship after apparently winning the final shoot-off against the home favourite Mathieu Delmar. But Mark was incorrectly awarded a target by a referee, and instead of taking the title, he demanded a second shoot-off and purposefully missed each of the final five plays to ensure the correct winner won the top prize. Carl Bloxham finished in third after beating Ely Hawks' Nick Hendrick after a close sport shoot-off. And finally, Kent's old police and crime commissioner may have been a public critic of shooting, but the new PCC looks like a breath of fresh air. Matthew Scott has announced £39,000 of new funding to address the backlog in firearms licensing that built up under his predecessor Anne Barnes. Kent was previously thought to be the second worst performing licensing department in England and Wales, but under Mr Scott it has committed to ensuring delays don't build up again. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And it's only a few weeks to go to the UK Game Fair at Stoneley Park, Warwickshire. You can buy your tickets here by clicking on the link below. This has been The Shooting Show. Thanks for watching.